Folks, welcome back. I'm glad you're still with us. If you're out there listening, and not many do, but a lot of people do. Some often on that very, but not many stay with us very long because I understand that what we teach sometimes isn't always a pleasant thing to look at. But the truth is a truth, and it's given to us to bless us, not curse us. I don't know why we, as I guess, because it's our nature, have such a problem with truth. And maybe because we see our faults when we see truth. You reckon? Yeah, well, the truth shows us our lust. It does. It shows our, our, our lack of character. Yeah. yeah. They used to have a show, wasn't it called Truth or Consequences? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now there's no consequences. That's, That's true. Right. So they couldn't have that show anymore. I mean, I, I, I heard this a long time ago. It's an old story, but I'm sure you all probably heard it. But if you ever want to fix a broken lamp, you can't see all the cracks from the outside. Put the light on the inside. Mm-hmm. Then you see all the cracks. Mm-hmm. When the Holy Spirit put the light inside you, you're going to see cracks. Right? Mm-hmm. The idea is to try to patch those cracks and make them go away. Then it'll be a stronger vessel. That's true. We never quite get them all done, but that doesn't mean we shouldn't strive for perfection. And if we could just do that, if we could have kept this as a church in our minds and hearts of who we, who we are in Christ, I know all of us, me double, sometimes take for granted what Christ has done for us. Mm-hmm. And I just, what's the right word, become uh, lackadaisical, good word, for really doing what I know I should do. I do it if it's convenient. If it's not, I don't do it. Now, is that the way a lot of people are sometimes? Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, we just, we can't comprehend as to what who we are in Christ. I mean, do you ever stop and think that you're really a joint heir with Jesus Christ? I'm not worthy of it. No, we're not, no. Through, that's, except through him. Right. But think what that's saying to you, Steve. You're a joint heir with Jesus Christ. Does that make kind of spatial? I don't mean in up any way, look how we done. It's by his grace. But feel who like, how's it, I mean, how did, when you dwell on this, how does it feel, though, that you're actually a son of the living God? Mm. Makes you feel like you're uh, in the groove. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It humbles you, too, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. But we can't boast anything, Kelly, about that. But you're a daughter of the living God. The creator of all things has claimed you as his child because you mm-hmm. give it to him. Now, how great is that? Well, we were made well, in his likeness. Yes, also, Scripture says that we are the bride of Christ. Exactly. Now, for uh, a ma- from that point of view, coming from man, it's a little hard, but... It, so from, we are the bride of Christ. Yeah, it, but for it, Kelly, is a female gender that's more acceptable and understandable. Yeah, but it's, we're, we're compared to the bride because we're to be pure and chaste yeah. before him. Right. But that, So we were being given that great honor comes with great responsibility. You just follow what I said? Mm-hmm. If one of my three sons had broken the law, and this didn't affect them, it affected me. Mm-hmm. You follow what I'm saying? That's why we had laws set up in the house. You do this, this happens. You do that, this happens. Mm-hmm. And I kept a switch in the corner all the time. It was the greatest deterrent to crime there ever was. Because yeah. it sat there. It says in Psalms, uh, God loves the law. Yeah, it, it does. Mm-hmm. So with the, with the privilege and the honor, Margaret, of being a child of God... There come responsibilities and duties, do they not? Yes. You know, I give my boys chores to do growing up, not because I was punishing them, but they had no responsibility. Right. When they, when they bought their first car, I helped them get it, but I didn't pay for it for them. They had to work for it. Mm-hmm. So they didn't tear it up on purpose. Mm-hmm. Or they, they cared. So being a child of the living God comes with great blessings, but the responsibilities are equal to that. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a teaching day entitled 10 Dangerous Signs of Destruction. Now, I'm going to show you some things that happened in history that the church should have seen and said no to. Unfortunately, we have become so used to the dark that we no longer blush or flinch at evil. Am I telling the truth? Mm-hmm. Sure. You remember about the book of uh, Jeremiah, I think, and my eyes go blank. It said these people could these people could no longer blush. Mm-hmm. We no longer felt embarrassed. Yeah. Yeah. I mean blush. fifty years ago what what made my grandma get upset and turn red, today we just shrug off and go on. 
Would you call that getting used to the dark? Yep. Yeah. Luke chapter 16. <clears throat> Christ is talking to the <clears throat> his disciples and giving a parable about something that he said it, but if you read it and don't, you don't look at it very closely, you just read over and skim over and don't catch it. But he said something that is very profound in verse 8. And the Lord com, 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 uh, com, commended. Com, commended, thank you, the unjust steward because he had done wisely. For the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. Hmm. Wow. What did you say? He said that's what's happening today. Yeah. <laughs> the children of this world, the children of Satan are wiser in this time than the children of light. Now why is that? That's not that shouldn't be that way, should it? Shouldn't we be able to see through these this darkness and not be deceived so easily? We're under a spell. We are. Colossians. Chapter three. Now this is where we, as a people, we so quickly fall away and are so easily deceived by Satan's snares and deceptions. It's written to us so clearly, but I'm guilty, I'm guilty, I'm guilty. Thank God for grace and for mercy and for forgiveness, Joe. Mm -hmm. But I'll be damned right now. Without mercy, we would have never known grace. Colossians chapter 3. Bill, you there? Yes, I'm Read there. verse 1, please. Very slowly. Stop at every comma. If ye then be risen with Christ. All right, stop there. If conditional, is it not? Is that conditional? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you're really born again and risen with Christ, go ahead. Seek those things which are above. Stop. Whoa. What? You mean his kingdom must come first? Yes. Have we got that back a few times? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bill. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Go ahead and read verse 2. Break it up again. Set your affection on things above. Not whoa, on whoa, whoa. Set your affection where? On your family? On your home? On your country? On Jesus. On the things above. That doesn't mean that you don't love your family. That doesn't mean that you don't respect people that you know. But your affection is on Him, number one, priority always. Yes. As Marcia said one time, she's feel secure because she's number two in my life. He's got to be number one. As long as he's number one, I'm going to be good to her. True? Mm -hmm. See, that's, that's, that's the way it works. And I feel who, Doc? You look at one of the most imperfect men ever lived. One of the dumbest creatures ever created me. But I've learned that his laws, his things, is where my heart wants to be. And he says, set your affection on the thing above. I'm just learning how to do that. Dumb. What's the rest of us say? What's the rest of us say? Not on things of the earth. Okay. For we are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Now look at look at not on things of the earth, because you're dead. Mm -hmm. You're dead to the world, and you're hid with Christ. That's right. Mm -hmm. How is it we got to where we are in the nation right now, where the church one time was the leading authority of society? It was founded on the principles of God. How did we get to the point now where the church accepts perversion? Because our affections changed. We have perverted affections, Kelly. Mm -hmm. We'll condone sin in our family's lives in order to get along with the family. Keep peace in the family. So our affections are set on the family, not on God. Go along and yeah. get along. Yeah. He said it another way. He said, he said uh, compared to how you love God, yeah. you, you actually hate, hate your family. Hate your family, exactly. But, but he's just saying that's the comparison. Yes. There. Not that you really hate them. And the more you love God, the more you love your family, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. you've got the right priority. But folks, I'm guilty. God forgive me for this. But if we allow a family member to live in sin and come in among us like nothing's wrong, we're damning that soul to hell. Yeah. Yeah. Our affections are on them more than our word of God. You denied yeah. Christ before them by that. That's hard, but I didn't write the book. Any comments so far? 
<clears throat> Matthew 6. Was that number one? <laughs> <laughs> Have you started on numbers yet? I ain't started on numbers yet. Oh, okay. We got to go to numbers? Mm -hmm. I'm number a minute. Yep, I am. Right. Matthew chapter 6. I hate to move verse and chapter in my Bible. Can't find it. Matthew 6. <laughs> Now, please, I'm preaching this because I'm telling the truth, and it's not to condemn, it's not to do anything but to uplift the church, exhort the church to get our priorities right. I I wish, I really wish that y'all could come and visit me for a few days and realize how imperfect I am. I know, talk <laughs> sure even. Well, we already visited, we thought that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I am just a mortal man, Steve, but I, my heart really sincerely... At least most time it's ours to do what's right. Okay? There are times I get in my own way. You ever do that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost every day, it seems like. Uh, Ma Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 says what, Kelly? I thought you were going to 19. Sorry. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. Whoa, stop. <clears throat> take no thought for your life? What do we hold dearest most of the time? Our own lives. Our own lives yeah. Am I telling the truth? Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that people will kill for, but almost nothing they die for. That's exactly right. Good point. When Christ went to the cross, did he take thought for his life or your life? For ours. Ours. Not for his. And we're supposed to be Christ's life, right? Right. That doesn't mean that we don't want to get grocery on the table. That doesn't mean we don't want to shelter. That's not the point. But we spend so much time worrying about our physical substance... That we forget about the spiritual side of it sometimes, don't we? Mm -hmm. Joe, that's good teaching. Oh, definitely. Go ahead. Read, uh, who's that? Go ahead. What you shall eat or what you shall drink. Yep. Go ahead. Nor yet for your body what you shall put on. Is not the life more than meat and the body than raiment? I know from being a mere man that rearing three sons that eat like horses and try and keep food on the table from time to time we went through some very tight times and I know there are times I actually was concerned about what I was going to eat but I just told it there if I served him it would work out yep. that's why he said now Steve uh, can you read verse 34 take therefore no thought for the morrow for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Uh -huh. Don't sweat it. Do what you can to do what's right today and let the, let our Father take care of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We can't jump ahead one day and can't back up a second, can we? No. Our Father exists in past, present, and future. Yeah. Do you not think He can take care of that? Mm -hmm. Well, verse 33 kind of puts it in, in line. Well, we'll get that in a minute. We'll get it in a minute. I was going to get through As a matter of fact, we'll get that next. Go read that to us. <laughs> but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. What things? Clothing? Shelter? Food? You put my kingdom first, I'll add those things to you. You'll get them. That's right. Mm -hmm. you, I'll bless you. But the sad part is when people become prosperous, they forget who gives them prosperity. It's right. always been the case. Absolutely. Like, like I said, about the, about the hog, never look up see where the acorns come from. They just eat them. Yeah. And, and that's, unfortunately, that's people's nature. Now, let's go to Mark. I'm sorry, Matthew. I'm sorry, still, Matthew. Chapter 5. Does anybody in here remember? I don't think John Cleaver here yet. When I did the teaching on the on the uh, the million mandate, feel you remember that? Mm hmm I heard you teach it. Yeah. But not here. here. We had a copy of it. The, in Genesis, Adam and all mankind were given a dominion <coughs> mandate to subdue the earth. <coughs> And make it produce for man. We were given dominion over the animals and the, and the earth, not other men, but animals and earth to go out and do, um, have dominion over that. Mm -hmm. 
And then in, in Matthew chapter 28, we're given a great commission. Mm -hmm. yeah. They both go just like that. But unfortunately, it seems like we forgot Matthew 28 says to go out and disciple, teach all nations to obey my laws. What have we done? The opposite. Just the work. We're We're the amazing. opposite. Just the opposite. We've we, been the worst uh, example for the world that ever was. Well, we know personally people that keep the law, but break it all the time. Yeah. They'll fuss at you if you eat, if you eat a piece of pork, but they'll, they'll go out and drink a pint of whiskey. It's okay. Mm -hmm. I'm serious. Mm -hmm. That's called a hypocrite. Yeah. But I'm going to show you in the Bible what Christ said to us. Again, we are the children of Christ, the children of light, the sons of God, sons and daughters of God. And with that great privilege and power and authority comes great responsibility and duty. You see, I taught this, and I think I mentioned it in my other book, but I've taught before. Men are not given rights. God does not give rights. No, he, doesn't. he gives duties, responsibilities, then He gives you blessings. Mm -hmm. We don't have a right to keep bare arms. We have the duty to bear arms to protect ourselves. That's in the Bible. Mm -hmm. When we try to turn it to man's rights, that destroys it all. <clears throat> well, if a man says, I have rights, or inalienable rights, he's declaring himself to be much more like a little God. Uh, he is. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13. Link to me, verse 13. Did you say me? Matthew 5, 13, yeah. No, mm -hmm. yeah. Right, yeah. <laughs> you are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor wherewith shall it be salted it is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under foot of man Amen. you are the salt of the earth that's right mm -hmm. if you lose that savor that preservative power that you're supposed to have as salt you're thenceforth good for nothing mm -hmm. to be cast out and trodden under the foot of the world Right. Is a church being trodden under the foot of the world? Oh, absolutely. It sure is. Why would that be? What is that testimony against us or not? Mm, our salt lost its taste. Exactly. Lost its, uh, salt is made to be preservative. Mm -hmm. Not just flavor, but right. preservative. Right. So with responsibility, uh, with the, the blessings of being salt and the preservative for society, we lost our saltness. We, did, we denied our duties. They scoff at us. They laugh at us. Why shouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Wow. It's one Mus big difference between mu Muslims and uh, Christianity. They believe in their Quran. And they enforce it too. Yep. They enforce it. Yep, they sure do. Read, chapter, read verse uh, uh, 14, please, honey. You're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You're the light of the world. Mm -hmm. Just this for a second. Let that sink in. Phil, you're the light of the world. People that see you should see Christ. I try. The light of the world. How how great is that? Has anybody in here beside, beside me been in coal mines? It's a huge responsibility. I've been you for, but not coal. Do what? It's a huge responsibility. Absolutely it is. Well, I, was, I worked in coal mines for some years. And one night, my light went out. Somebody used it before that, my, my section come on. I didn't know it. And I was back in by myself working on some belts and clean up some stuff. My light went out. Do you know? How you're totally it's helpless. It's dark. You can go like this and feel the heat from him. You can't see it. So I... Finally, the fireballs come along. We didn't have radios back then. The fireballs come along. I couldn't move anyway. Come along, and he, and he had a, what they call a uh, gas, uh, oh gosh, mine's going to blink. A light to check Brandy. for gas. I'm Brandy. trying to think of it. Oh. But anyway, my mind's going to blink. And he, 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 of course, he, he let me borrow that to get out with, get another light. You know, that little tiny flame was nothing in, the, in, the, in daylight. But that dark place, that little flame lit up enough that I could walk through the darkness. Yeah. How great is that light? Think about that, Steve. That's you. The words of a very simple song. This little light of mine. 
I'm going to let it shine. Mm -hmm. So verse, many times we've got self smeared all over it that it's not shining through. Verse 16 says, it says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Oh, please pay attention, folks. The church is to have works. Good works. So that they, uh, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The church no longer believes in works. They think it's all grace and do what you want. They keep shooting their own people. Yeah. I, I, you know, because the ministry I'm in, there's a lot of people in the church. The church shunned away when they said, hey, I got a problem with this. And they told, no, you don't. That can't happen. And yet the church shuns away. I'm their last hope. Yeah. All yep. they need to do is read the next two verses. and Read them to us. Go ahead. Amen. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. Mm -hmm. And that right there, it ends. They don't read on yeah, to the exactly, next verse. Yeah, exactly. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. And I've seen people take that to the extreme to become legalist. <coughs> But they deny the laws of charity and kindness. I've seen that. It breaks my heart. That is true. Mm -hmm. Now, we're going to go to Matthew 6. Then I'll get, get into the lesson. I'm setting, a, I'm setting a foundation for this. So far, have you seen, Phil, where the church was to be the preservative, the light, and the force that continues the earth in the right, right way? It's just ministry on earth. Exactly. The great... Uh, the, the, the great commission and the minion mandate was given to his people not to the heathen mm -hmm. but when the, when the church quit being light and sought mm -hmm. it's been mocked ridiculed and cast aside cursed mm -hmm. but we can't blame God can we Matthew chapter 6 okay where was okay <clears throat> oh Lord forgive us for our stupidity leaders Mark, would you read verse 19? <clears throat> Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, for moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and stand out. Can I ask this question? Let's all be honest. There's nothing again wrong with being prosperous. God forbid that it's, it's Bible. Nothing wrong planning for the future. That's also Bible. But when it becomes your priority in life and nothing else, is that not idolatry? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it not? And how many times have we not done or said what we should have done because we didn't lose that paycheck or welfare check or even our retirement check? Hmm. I'm raising my hand. Do you eat to live or do you just live to eat? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. And... Phil, would you read verse 24? Matthew 6, 24? Yes. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Okay, now I just got to ask. He said you can't serve both God and mammon, which means worldly riches or worldly lust mm -hmm. or desires. Mm -hmm. You can't serve both. Have we tried? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Where's the goddess? Nowhere. <laughs> now, get this, this is not to throw stones. I'm trying to tell you, folks, we still have hope in Christ. Blessed, blessed assurance in Christ. Mm -hmm. But that does not mean we can lay down, do nothing, and live in our blessed assurance. We're to live holy and righteously as much as possible before the world so they can see in us Christ. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Years ago, now pray, I just this humbled me a lot. But I walked into a shop one time. Was, they worked on some generators. I sold them to different places, and, and the guy I walked in behind a guy, a nice gentleman. I remember, I was still living or not. He said, "When you walked in the room, I felt a presence of." And I thought, "Wow, thank you, Lord." Mm -hmm. You know, because I really try to treat people. I'm, I'm generally a jolly person, because God's good to me. Yeah. You know, I've I led people to Christ again, bragging on Christ. I mean, right at your desk in offices. But if I don't tell them who I am and what I am, how do they know I'm a Christian? They might see it, maybe, I hope. But isn't it to testify to them and tell them about Christ and salvation of Christ, how important is that? Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. That's more important than a sale. And God's honored me with that, Henry Marsha. So, any comments so far? Well, verse 21 tells us why. It says, because there you where go. your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Good point. Thank you, sweetheart. I'm glad you caught that. Good point. Too many believers, and that's included me for a long time, their heart was not really in heaven. It was on this earth. Mm -hmm. My family was here. I had a living here, Kelly. I had bills to pay. You know, I was caught up in worldly things, and there's no sin in having bills to pay and having to pay them. That's honorable. Right. But when that becomes my main thought process, I've got to pay that bill. And forgive by Christ who promised me these things. Mm -hmm. I've sinned. Joe, what do you think about Sarge? Well, we just we need to think about is Christ first above all things? Because without that, no matter what we do, it's all vanity. It is. It is. Yeah. And when we try to keep the bills paid, when we try to keep things together, <clears throat> when Jesus Christ comes more on our lips than not on our hearts, and that's, I think, a lot where the church is today. What did Christ say about that to the Pharisees? Mm -hmm. Arm me with your lips, but your heart's far from you, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they proceed to call them hypocrites. They're times. <clears throat> he did. So, yeah, there's just so much of the hypocrisy of religion out there, but not of faith. Well, I, I did several, I did some research on this. I want to get this as accurate as possible and make it, so I made a lot of notes because I didn't want to get certain things. I'm going to do something in history. But let's back up 100 and some years, about the year 1900. Look at America then, America now. She was not perfect by any means then. But compared to now, it was a godly nation. Mm -hmm. But let's go back to about 1900 or so. Okay? I'm just going to share some things that happened since then. This has all happened since 1900, for example. Back then, it was a thriving nation and mostly a happy, peaceful nation. We, in the 50s, we never locked our doors. No. no one ever worried about anybody's neighbor stealing from them. it. Was just, it wasn't, you know, it just didn't, it's not, that didn't happen. You never saw a cop go through Monroe, West Virginia. That was as rare as can be. Mm -hmm. They weren't needed. So things have changed. It's just, a, it's in the peacefulness of a society, has it not? The simplicity of it. Marshall, I have this picture next time I'm here. has a picture in New York City in 1956 with the Empire State Building, two, billion, two buildings hot lit up in three crosses. Mm hmm. Did that today, what would happen? Wow. Good to you. And families were still strong as families. Dads and moms were still considered <clears throat> to need two parents. The children as a whole were basically well behaved. I went to public school. We didn't have cops in the school. No. They needed They had a paddle. The Ten Commandments hung on the wall. Our, our principals and teachers read the Bible to us every day. <laughs> Tigers Valley High School, they play hymns and they had prayer. Look what it done to me. It ruined me. We had the highest education standards. We did. The highest health standards. As a whole, in 1900, the nation still feared God and what he really was. We paid very few taxes. What you earn, you got to keep. Yeah. Imagine that. Before income tax. Before sales tax. Yeah. Wow. But in the midst of all this prosperity, a spiritual cancer started to develop. Think a minute. A cancer started to develop. The cancer doesn't kill you overnight. You don't know you have it sometimes until you're dead. I want to read to you something right before here. I want to read to you a bird's eye view of nations by a guy named Tyler. Alexander Tyler. Now listen to this, please. Let's just bring it to America in 16, 1700s. From bondage to spiritual faith. From spiritual faith to great courage. From courage to liberty. From liberty to abundance. From abundance to selfishness. From selfishness to complacency. Why is it most people won't speak up against evil? They might lose their job. Is that complacency? Yep. Yeah. From complacency to apathy, from apathy to dependency, from dependency back to bondage. Right. Mm. Have we come full circle, Phil? My first day at Tigers Valley, 
principal met me on the front steps. Nobody was at school except him and I. It was my first day, February 16th, 1976. And he said to me, Mr. Hudock, if you can stand the apathy here, you might just make it. Ooh. Okay, that was that was 76. Wow. Now, if he was still alive and he was on the doorstep and a new teacher walked up, he might he might say, if you can stand the dependency here. Yeah. Because it, it's gone from apathy to dependency. Who's, who was principal then, 76? Frank Tuchman was his name. And because he was the best principal I ever worked under, the most principled man, and within two years, um, they got rid of him. Really? And he went to South Carolina and, and became a principal and a teacher at a Christian school. Good for which him. Which was good for him. Good for him. Yeah. It's just like I took my mm-hmm. children to Pickens, yeah. where it was, it was 40 years in the past yes. compared to the rest of the schools. But the downward trend in all these schools is continuing. Yeah. Well, when I went to high school in the area, it was Mr. Schoonover. Do you remember him by any chance? No, but I can see him on probably about 25 different class pictures. Because he, he was there for over 20 years. Yes, he was. Mr. Schoonover made sure the boy's hair wasn't long enough to touch her collar. Mm-hmm. The girls coming up cannot wear dresses above their knee. Mm-hmm. Now, this way it was. They couldn't wear pants school. They could wear them in the wintertime under the dresses and take them off and got to school. I people say, well, that's awful. That's terrible. They couldn't do No, it wasn't awful and terrible. The children were disciplined, well-behaved. There was no guns in school to shoot somebody. We had guns in school. They had class mm-hmm. and marksmanship. Mm-hmm. But something changed since the 1960s. Well, people that knew him, I, I, I met people that graduated when he was there, and they said that, that the... The students feared him, but I don't think they feared him because uh, of anything he would do to harm them. To harm them, no, he was just strict. He expected you to follow the rules, and so you know you just knew that if you broke the rules, I think they respected him too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear of respect. But in 1900, I'm just going to do some notes I made. We survived the war of northern aggression mm-hmm. and the painful southern reconstruction. Uh, when they redone this out. Mm-hmm. But from sea to shining sea, we had cities that were growing, industrious. Uh, they were bustling. They had rich farms and world-class universities. The, we were the envy of the whole world in 1900. Everybody wanted to come to America. Mm-hmm. Well, they still do, but not for the same reasons. Back then, they come here to find a job and prosper. Now they come here to get on welfare. And it was a <laughs> melting pot, not a pot that's melting. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And even though it will say the blacks are still somewhat repressed in some areas, they were growing by leaps and bounds in prosperity back in the 50s and 40s and even through then. But something started to change. Until we had the civil rights law passed to cause confusion in public, the blacks were content people. They were. Yeah. They were growing. They had their own businesses they and did. everything within their communities. And their families were, they had father and mother. And had strong yeah. family ties. But stop and think, in 1900, up to 1930s, there was no federal income tax, no state income taxes, mm-hmm. no sales taxes, social security taxes, capital gains taxes, no IRS, no Department of Homeland Security, no Department of Education, no welfare schemes, no control, uh, uh, the banks, very little debt, currency backed up by gold and silver. No mm-hmm. driver's license. No driver's license needed. Nope. Now think about that. The people earn what they can earn. They got to keep it all. They didn't have the EPA tell them what to do. This, in our, just a little longer than we've been alive. Mm-hmm. They went from a system that was basically don't harm others, property or persons, right. to now don't do anything at all, at all. that we don't. Agree with. Well, now it's crime against the state, not, not individuals. Pre crime. Yeah. Right. In 1913, the dollar was worth, what well, today that's two, it's worth two cents what it was in 1913. Yeah, I believe it. That's not even worth your thoughts. That's not even worth, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, forget the penny for your thoughts. Now we're talking about paper currency, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Back, back then, it was back to silver yes. and gold. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But women back then, and I remember this grew up in the, in the 50s even, they were ladies. They're family-oriented. 
and they were respected by people mostly because they were they were ladies. Men didn't generally harm ladies back then. They were respected. Today they look like whores, act like whores, and wonder why they get raped. Uh -huh. I'm telling the truth. Back in the early 1900s, when the first movie film came out, a congressman was watching. I, I forgot his name, but they showed a little bit of the woman's ankle, and he he objected to the about the whole movie because of that. Oh, how things have changed. Young men were expected when I was growing up too to be gentlemen. I'm serious. Yeah. You didn't, you didn't talk nasty to young ladies. I, I, I'm going to share this story. I, I know I'm going through all this, but I'm taking my time. I'm trying to build a case. Somewhere in this gap, we lost the light and the salt. Somewhere in this gap, we started selling our birthright for a handout. Somewhere it all started. But I, one of the people I call on is a lady, parts person, pretty, pretty young lady. But the guys come in there and, and where she's working, and talk like they would a bunch of other, bunch of other guys. Use language I wouldn't use in anywhere. Mm -hmm. And say things that embarrass me. After they left, I, I, I talked to her and said, I, I apologize for, these, for this. I, I, this didn't re represent real men. She said, that's okay, I'm used to it. Oh, okay. Isn't that sad? That's the biggest problem. And the pulpits in the 1900s. Yeah, exactly mm -hmm. right. The pulpits were still mostly on fire for Christ back then. They 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 fear God and, the, and not government. Mm -hmm. And the churches were filled. Exactly. Disobeying a teacher, I remember this, got you smacked to school and smacked and got home. Mm -hmm. True. Mm -hmm. There 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 were there was no CPS to snatch the children. Mm -hmm. Kidnap. Kidnap them. How do we get to feel who'd up where we tolerate this? Let's select with Dick's granddaughter. CPS used to be centimeters per second. There you go. <laughs> but they took <laughs> Dick's granddaughter, took her away, and hadn't seen her for years now. Mm -hmm. No one knows where she's at. Just straight when they walked out of the store, the grocery store. We had tiny government, free enterprise, peaceful mm -hmm. commerce. Uh, but the thing that held it together, even then, was the Christian values taught. At the churches and at home, morality, self-control, industriousness, uh, just playing out goodness of people makes society work. Mm -hmm. When the people become corrupt and mm -hmm. not self-governing, they cannot be free. Well, it's like a cancer; it, it spreads. Yeah, I know. Back when I grew up, there were no nursing homes needed. The children took care of the parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, isn't that a weird thing? There were no adult protective services needed. Now, I don't mean it didn't happen, but as a whole, as a society in need of Churches fed the needy, not welfare. Mm -hmm. Now you get in trouble feeding the needy. Oh, yeah, you can be arrested in some places. Mm -hmm. yeah. <clears throat> the cancer started being planted big time in the 1900s, but started in the 1880s. It started, and I decided to make these notes because it's so important. We, did, we didn't catch this. The cancer plan it was a slow killer, of course. In the 1880s, a well-funded and well-organized advanced guard of termites, they call them, started eating away at America's foundations. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's the Bible say about foundation being destroyed? It destroys that the foundations are for destroyed. What can the righteous do? And they don't mm -hmm. like the light either. How, how do you rebuild a house without a foundation? Really? You can't. I love it. I said termites don't like the light. Mm. And it wasn't too long after the 1880s because the 1890s were the gay 90s. Yeah. That's when they started becoming loose. Yep, it is. Prosperity. Mm -hmm. America, of course, like I said, wasn't perfect then because there's people in it. But but, the, but in, the, in the 1880s, especially, the Marxists started coming in under different names. You know, we call them progressives back then, maybe. John Dewey. And John Dewey. Uh, now they call them socialists or communists, but same thing, they call them progressives. Now I call a lot of them Democrats. I'm not picking on Democrats, it's true. <laughs> it's true. They started planting the seeds of unrest in labor in the labor forces. Mm -hmm. You know, the labor, I mean, it's, I'm not saying that the labor people, that, that the industrial leaders were treating them all, all fair, but they started planting seeds of unrest instead of people working to get it fixed. They started rioting and, and, and you know, picking it and killing 
And in the 1900, the Zionist Jewish money kings like Schiff, Jacob Schiff, and uh, what's the other guy's name? Warburg. Warburg, yes, what up? I'm trying to think of uh, Barak, uh, Bernard Ber- Barak mm-hmm. was his name, mm-hmm. had a, uh, had already joined forces with the power hungry money makers, you say, uh, the kings like J.P. Morgan, John Rockefeller, the globalist money kings uh, to fund red. Like they call it red, red agitation to change and under, undermine a prosperous, peaceful republic. Republic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so the forces are coming in to cause the people to become apathetic and greedy. Mm-hmm. Where was the church? Asleep at the pulpit. What made them start giving in to the sin? <clears throat> Something that they embraced. Did their mm-hmm. mind leave the kingdom of God and start thinking about things down here? Mm-hmm. So we're going to start with 10 deadly wounds, I guess you could say, of society or America. In 1896, Adolf O.C.H.S. buys the New York Times. He was a Zionist Jew. The New York Times was the most influential newspaper, and it still is today. For over 120 years, they have been misinforming the public and influencing all other media. And that was said by Al Gore, believe it or not. Still, still worshipped as the most reliable source of truth. Imagine that. Mm-hmm. The New York Times. It's called the Fourth Estate. Now, when people started looking at the newspapers looking for truth and took the eyes out of the Word of God, what do you think could have happened? Well, you had people like uh, William Randolph Hearst came along. Exactly. Yeah. You give me, uh, how was it? Uh, something about pictures of war. Give me the pictures, I'll give you a war. Exactly. That's an mm-hmm. idea. And in 1901, McKinley was assassinated. Now, I didn't know this. I'll say this. I thought it was interesting. Killed by a red communist, Leon Zorkus. And Teddy Roosevelt took his took over. T.R. was a uh, we'll say he was a progressive to say it to be polite. And it's kind of like whenever uh, Reagan was shot and Bush was vice president, mm-hmm. you notice how his policy changed some, and Bush was a new world order in the beginning. And Reagan was shot, kind of a warning, I believe, mm-hmm. and things started changing. And I wonder again, whenever J.R. commenced, T.R. commenced, Teddy Roosevelt commenced, started moving things forward for the progressives, why didn't church say anything? It's just in, in 1908, a few years later, the National Monetary Commission was sets, a, sets the stage for 1913 Central Bank under Woodrow Wilson. Again, all these things started happening step by step by step by step. And I keep wondering, where were the children of light? Where the children of light? Where the children of light? They were they probably, probably infiltrated the seminaries before I'm the sure. government. The cemeteries? I mean, seminaries? And there were probably more people that spoke up, but because of the New York Times, because of the media, you didn't hear about it. That's true. That's very true. And even though some people just, and a lot of them, like today, are probably afraid to speak up because they've become unpopular with their neighbors and friends and family. I was talking to one of our family last night, a sweet young lady, but so naive or ignorant, I don't know which, talking about maybe if we started looking at other, other religions' holidays and wishing them a happy whatever, Instead of just thinking about our holidays, it'd be a peaceful world. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I, I don't, I don't understand it. That's called multiculturalism, obviously. But well, if you notice that, <coughs> all well, some people call it Jewish holidays, but the the feast days, there's always some holiday around those feast days other than ours. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. 1913, number three, income tax and Federal Reserve Act. One year later. Wilson brought in the income tax after 1913. It's one, one to 6% only on the wealthy, promised and promised no, no more than that. This one to 6% only on the wealthy. And it's only temporary. It's only temporary. What if they lied to us? They, and they started fueling, of course, big government. The income taxes mm-hmm. pay for wars and everything else. Mm-hmm. Not, not a penny of our money goes into to run the government, it runs other things. I wonder what would happen, Phil. I mean this seriously. If Patrick Henry and George Washington could have seen this in 1913, do you think they would have said anything? 
I mean, I wonder about that. Well, Patrick Henry was warning that it would happen. Yeah, he was. He said that they were there were uh, termites. Uh, you know, that, that as the ink was drying on the Constitution, there were. That's why he wouldn't attend the Constitution Convention. He said he saw it wouldn't work. But I wonder though, seriously, if they could have come back and spoke, would anybody listen to them? No. But they would have spoke. Well, they would have spoke. I mean, did they listen to Christ? Did they? No. I remember one time I was going around catching, <laughs> sign, get petitions for put Pat Buchanan on the ballot. And one, one guy, he was reluctant to, but he told me, even if Jesus Christ was running for president, he'd never get elected. No, he, he, he wouldn't. He wouldn't. No. And I said, well, I had to agree with him there. He's right. It's worse than that. He'd, he'd have got arrested. Well, yeah. But two months after the income tax, they started a probably owned New York-based <coughs> banking mafia. What was that called? Federal that Reserve Bank. The feds. The Fed was given the privilege of controlling the money banker, the, the money uh, supply, and, cha and changing its what was worth, charging interest on it. The Federal Reserve Bank, a privately owned bank, was, was given the duty of printing money, not coining money, not back with gold silver, printing it and charging you interest to use it. Right. And this model applied by the trillion since then. But this church still thinks they have money. I showed last night to a family member's a hundred dollar bill I got back in 1950. Y'all saw that. I showed what that was backed by. I have a hundred silver dollars in the bag. That hundred dollar bill says on it, redeemable and lawful money. And I showed what lawful money was. They got it, but it was like, okay. Yeah. They, don't, they can't conceive what it's done to us. But again, what did, who did Christ kick out of the temple? Money changers. Money changers. He took a whip to them, didn't he? Yep. Mm -hmm. When the money changers stepped into society back in 1913 and 1920s, where was the church? Changing money. Yeah, exactly. And under under a German Jewish banker named Warburg, the Fed ex, uh, exegious mandate was given to it. Imagine that. And ever ever since then has caused and made recession, depressions, inflation, and a whole lot more, obviously. Mm -hmm. They control the economy any way they want to. And number four, 1929, the Great Depression was, and the New Deal took over. It was a New Deal. Nothing. They don't call it New Deal for nothing. Yeah. I, 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 we're going through a lot of these things, but I remember in my lifetime when Johnson started the Great Society. Folks, we have been so duped. We took mm -hmm. our eyes off heaven yeah. and things in heaven. And start thinking about a retirement. Mm -hmm. Did we not? Yeah. yeah. It wasn't great society, it was great big government. After replacing Scrapegood Hoover, FDR wastes billions on welfare and make, make work mm -hmm. schemes like uh, jobs like the, what do you call the, the SC, SC, CCC? CCCs. Yeah. Those are government made jobs. Okay? They were made by the government. To make people look, look like they're working and producing. But now think a minute. Where did government get the money to pay those people? Yes. From us. Exactly. Yeah. Redistribution. That's all they do. These programs did nothing to further the economy. It just made taxes higher for those that are working already. Mm -hmm. They promised. And when I was growing up, when I was a young boy, dad, my grandma, especially, but dad too, thought Roosevelt was a god. He promised a chicken in their pot and a car in every garage. He didn't say he's going to steal it from you to get it. Yeah. Government can't produce chickens. No, they can't. They manufacture cars. They tax us so they can give that to somebody else. Now, whether it, it is unlawful in God's laws to steal no matter how you do it. Mm -hmm. You do it with a gun or a pencil. Either way, it's still stealing. I preached to someone one time on, on welfare, welfare the thievery. How makes people mad? You lie to get money. Guess what you've done? Mm -hmm. well, the pencil don't work. They use the gun anyway. Uh, sure. <laughs> but it it would end up well, they was used as a Great Depression to scare the people further into the programs. And where did the church turn for their help? To Christ right. no. or the world? The, the world. world. Why? Because it's, it's easier, wasn't it? Yeah. 
No, it's very convenient to run to a bank, borrow the money to build your church house. Mm -hmm. It's very convenient to go tax exempt because now you don't have to pay the real estate tax. It's very convenient to... Or the income tax. <coughs> mm -hmm. <coughs> income tax, yes. So it's, it's, it's a convenience that has got us into this mess. Yeah, we, we'll find out something here that started. Marsh, would you turn one thing up? Turn to Proverbs 23, please. Then I want to make some more points here very quickly. The feds caused the Great Depression. They brought Churchill from England to watch him crash the market. Mm -hmm. They did. I'm telling the truth. And a dangerous, now Patriots will say, a dangerous and very destructive psychological precedent started going into place. Mm -hmm. It was established. I read, now pay attention to the words, dangerous and psychological. Hmm. They had the people turn from God to government to provide their needs. Yeah. Is that a mindset? Yeah. No, that's... How many of y'all know families who have groomed their children to get on welfare? Oh, yes. that's an an occupation apprenticeship. Now. That's yeah. an apprenticeship yeah. anymore. Yes. That's a psychological effect, is it not? <clears throat> Yeah. And now we have foreigners over here demanding that they get welfare and never been here in their lives and they're getting it. Why? Well, the church is one that treats everybody Because the good. church gave it up. When they stopped taking care of the widows and the orphans, orphans yeah. and, and the, the needy, uh, number one, the wives were home. They could take food to the family that needed it and, and tell the husband, you're not working, you're not eating. You know, and take the food away and bring it back at evening. Uh, when they stopped taking care of those that the church was taking care for, then very shortly, they could not afford to do it mm -hmm. because government was taking a lot more than 10% of their income. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Joan Vion told us about the public-private partnerships, mm -hmm. which the government is not supposed to be involved in private enterprise. Mm -hmm. I mean, what do, you, what do we have? We have government and church partnerships. Yes, we do. It's called a corporation. We'll, we'll get that later on. And, and I, I think, I, I think really, the, I think the government moved in, not be, so much as because the church has moved out, but then the church has moved out because the government moved in. That's good. Well, I think it's both give and take, yeah. Those but you know, but I, I want to ask this question, I get a scripture. But how many of <clears> y'all think a discussion like this is important to, for the church to hear? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Why, why is nobody else teaching it? Because of reason. I don't want well, to on the tag. Because you've been incorporated, and you better not be teaching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> True. <laughs> now I want you to listen to Proverbs one verse, <coughs> verse twenty-three, chapter twenty-three, Proverbs. Marcia, now listen to this. It has, yeah, has a very important point. Proverbs twenty-three. Let me get there. Verse two. And put a knife to thy throat, if thou be a man given to appetite. Right. Yep. Yeah. And when thou uh, to I eat you, with uh, read verse one too. I forget, when thou sayest to eat with a ruler, consider diligently what is before thee. And put a knife to your throat if you're given the greedy. Be not disarmed. When you Be his dainties, for ahead. they are deceitful, deceitful and meat. De yep. de deceitful, deceitful meat. meat. <laughs> so in those three verses, he said. When you have fellowship with your leaders, be careful what they offer you. If you desire their dainties or their benefits, there's a hook in it. Mm. That's simple, Joe, right here in three verses yeah. of Proverbs that we're told not to do this. So is it like we're plea bargaining with mankind when we well, agree with them? Well, more or less. We, we've all done it because it sounds good. They make it sound like it's really something special, man. Because uh, right after that, they start Social Security. What a good idea to force people to save money so the nanny state could take over and take care of them. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a good idea, Phil. Time, didn't it? Well, and then they took the money and put it in the general fund. Exactly. And spent it. for other things. That's but look at this. Robbery. We're worn right there. And then we go into Social Security and say, yeah, take my money and save it for me. I can trust you. <laughs> yeah. No. Bah! Oh, gosh. Yeah. One more verse on closure today. Feel read Matthew 6, 33 again. I'm just enjoying this. Mm -hmm. I know I made a lot of notes, but I didn't want to miss anything. 
When I study this stuff, folks, I say this to me before God, when I study it, I want to get the lesson together. So when I tell you the truth, you can look for yourself. It's there. Mm -hmm. Matthew 6, 33 says what, Phil? But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. How did people live before Social Security then? That's a good question. They depended on the Lord. Exactly. Who took care of the old folk before nursing homes? The children. The family and the church. And God we trust. Who, who, took care, who took care of the health problem before insurances? Family and the Lord. Lord. Mm -hmm. the Lord sure. See, all, all these things mm -hmm. we already had. Well, well for the name of convenience, we want it easier. We, we don't want to have to have faith to receive this. Give us a check. Mm -hmm. Yeah. True. We don't want neighbors in our house. We want the TV in our house. True. What did you say, Sweetheart? We're also not satisfied with what we have. We want to keep up with the Joneses. So we do. The mother goes to work and leaves the children with whoever. That's very true. But there's a lot more. That, we have through four of the signs. And again, I ask this in closing. When all this was happening, somewhere along the line, somebody lost the salt and the light. Why, why, why didn't the preachers see through this and warn the nation? Maybe some did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But in whole, most of them thought, what a wonderful idea. You take my money and you can save it up and give it back to me when I retire. We know you wouldn't waste it. We know you wouldn't blow it. We trust you, government. We trust you, man. Cursed be the man put your trust in man makes face his arm. Whose heart departs from the Lord. That's what it says. Right. So what part of this, Phil Hudock, has the church failed to see? What part so far? About all of it? It's, it's like Hilmar told us the same thing happened in Germany. Yeah. People yeah. are snooping. You know, and, and people, fellowship is, is very important in the body of Christ. And you know, as I was growing up, it was nothing about on Saturday early afternoon for somebody to call and say, Y'all want to have seen? Yeah. They'd be our house would be full of people everywhere singing, and praise singing, the Lord. Yeah. The, 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 praising the Lord. Somebody in the kitchen cooking something. Somebody bringing something. You know, the kids playing right there. I mean, they didn't put the kids off in another corner or up. they didn't. You know, everyone was together and they were in unity. This, and not you know, not in form, not in fashion. But unity. Some was visiting, sitting on the couch. Mm -hmm. Some was mm -hmm. up, but around the piano singing. Those are some of my, uh, for my 16th birthday, mom and dad asked me what I would like to have if I wanted to have a party or what, you know, and that's when we did. I said, let's have a sing. A sing. And that's yeah. what, that mm -hmm. is yeah. one of the well. enjoyable, most enjoyable times of my life because there was fellowship, there was love. And, you know, you very seldom when someone dies, I mean, our community still a little bit of this, but a lot of it is the women going into the workforce, the older women not teaching the younger, yeah. mm -hmm. that they're to not just to take care of their family, right. but you need to be an outreach to the community, not an, okay, let's see who can tell the biggest gossip tale, to reach out to, to bake a cake, to, you know, People don't want people in their homes anymore. No. It's not like it used to be. You didn't have to call to go visit somebody. You went. Yeah. You know, the home was open. Now it's an intrusion. And and, and now it's like mm -hmm. you're bothering somebody. You're sitting there visiting, and they just keep looking at TV. You know, they want you know, one for it. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just, we had just, a good visit with my niece and, and her husband last night. And uh, I just thought how rare it is anymore. I mean, yeah, everybody's life is gone, but people are, but, you know, I don't. And I was grown and taught how to do that. Seen it, not just taught in word, mm -hmm. but the Bible was lived in my mom and dad's life in how they took care of, cared for others, show caring, and they didn't go tell everybody, well, I took a cake over to so-and-so the other day, just thought they needed, you know, they didn't go blow their own horn. Mm -hmm. They didn't look for the, to tell about of their own glory, yeah, yeah. you know, and that uh, there is just so, but again, and I can stand and say this over and over because I am one, it has happened that the women are not teaching the younger women because the mm -hmm. thing of it now, even women my age don't have any idea what to teach them. No. 
Well, they don't have any idea how to teach them in, in, in duty and in deed. They don't know how to, you know, they hear a lot of times, most of the time, people can't hear a word you say because what you're doing speaks a whole lot louder. Or what of, you're not doing. There's a lot of young mothers who don't even know how to breastfeed their children. That's true. At birth. No. Well, we're going to get ready to close and uh, don't forget those watching will be on the air the first Saturday of next month again. It's on Saturday and Sunday nights from 7 to 9 Eastern on shortwave on 9980 the first hour and 7520 the second hour. Hope you join us on the radio. And we'll be back on Bible study hopefully the 6th next month. But there may be some things come up we can't. We have to do it the following Saturday. But nonetheless, we want you to join us and, and stay tuned. If you ever want to call us in the office, I'll be in the office. Uh, we're in the office now on the fourth, second and third, second and fourth Thursdays. We're starting in May again. We'll probably go back in every Thursday. You can call us the office. It's at 304-846-4448. I do check the messages every day, and I do return phone calls about every day. So if you want to call me and talk to me, feel free to do so, folks. I'm not, I'm not unreachable. I'm right here. See you next time. Bye-bye. Holy cloud of witnesses surrounds us as we walk. Saints and martyrs through the ages who have marched this way before. And they cry, Oh, church, take courage. It's your time to take a stand. Time to march with hearts courageous through. We're marching on with hearts courageous. We'll follow everywhere you want us to. And should you lead us where the battle rages, let us march with hearts courageous after you. Should you